What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan. I'm into hiking and backpacking and gear. If you're into that stuff too, subscribe to the channel. Backpacking really isn't as complicated as people often make it out to be. Basically, you throw on a backpack, you hike, you camp, and then you do it the next day if you want to. So today, I'm gonna give you the basics to get you backpacking with a lot more confidence than you likely would have had otherwise. This video is pretty much going to change your life and uh, make you a better person. Ready? Here we go. Trip planning. Once you've decided on a location, the easiest and simplest thing that you can do is call forest or park headquarters and ask questions like, where are the trailheads? What's parking like? <laughs> is there water along the trail? Is there water at camp? Are the water sources only available during certain seasons? You can even ask them what their favorite trails are and maybe what some cool sites are to see or what the best campsites are. I would have missed out on an amazing campsite in the Smoky Mountains if I had not have asked those exact questions. Then find out the details on whether you can have fires and ask about leave no trace. Choosing gear. If you don't have any gear, this is your chance to call your hiker friends and borrow gear. Or you can even rent gear from an outdoor store. When you're picking out gear, the biggest and heaviest gear will be your shelter, your sleep system, and your backpack. If you decide to borrow gear, your options will obviously be limited to what other people are lending you, so don't base how good or bad the trip ended up being on the gear. If you're lucky enough to be purchasing new gear, I will save you some headache. <laughs> Buy the three biggest and most expensive gear items in this order. First, your shelter, then your sleep system, and then your backpack. This way, you know your pack will end up being the right size and your sleep system will actually fit inside of your shelter. Once you buy those three things, you can move on to the rest of the gear. Only buy things that are necessary for your trip. And here is some huge advice. Don't pack your fears. In other words, don't bring things out of fear because you think you'll end up needing it. But at the same time, don't be afraid to bring a comfort item or two like an air pillow or maybe some camp sandals for when you get to camp, especially if you think it's gonna make the trip a little bit nicer for you. And then practice setting up your gear at home. Do not expect to know how to use it when you get out to camp. YouTube isn't an option out there. But since I'm such an amazing teacher, I've included a list of the gear I bring on each trip in the description below. What to wear. Try your best to wear only synthetic or wool clothing. Don't wear cotton because it's heavy and doesn't dry out easily. You're gonna get dirty out there and you're gonna stink. Unfortunately, you're just gonna have to deal with that. There are no showers out there, so bringing an extra change of clothes isn't necessary. The only extra clothes you should pack are a mid-layer, a puffy jacket, and a rain jacket. If you're only going for the weekend, you'll be fine with just those clothes you're wearing. If your trip is longer, you can usually find a stream or a river to clean clothes if you absolutely need to. Choosing the right footwear is extremely important. Bad footwear means that you'll likely get blisters and hiking miles in the backcountry with blisters is not fun. One huge footwear mistake I see new hikers make is that they go out and they buy brand new shoes or boots. New shoes or boots are not meant to be tested in the backcountry. So instead, use shoes or boots that you already own even if you only use them around town. The only prerequisite is to make sure that they have comfortable and good tread. Then make sure you pack an extra pair of socks or two, change them out at least once a day. Navigating. Always let someone back home know your complete trip plans. Bring a paper map of the area in case your GPS fails. The best navigation app I've found yet is Gaia GPS. It's an awesome resource for finding your way around in the backcountry. Learn where the trailheads are. A trailhead is simply where the trail meets a main starting point. Sometimes they can be hard to find, so a ranger or a local will usually help you be able to find it. Find out if parking is allowed at the trail head and if your car can stay overnight. I have definitely been burned by that one. Stay on trail and only choose a new route if you've let others know where you're headed. If you're new, plan on hiking one and a half to two 
22 miles an hour, which will give you a good idea of how long it's going to take you to get to camp. Do your best to leave early enough to get to camp while there is still light and you'll have an easier time setting up camp. Choosing campsites. Depending on the location, some places will allow you to camp anywhere you like. Others have established sites you're required to stay at. If you're headed to a place where you have to stay at established campsites, don't be too ambitious with your hiking miles because you'll likely run out of steam. So choose campsites that are reasonable distances for your first few trips, but but one good thing about established campsites is that it's usually a better camp experience since the area is typically cleared and good for tents. If you're headed into an area where you can camp anywhere you like, pick sites based on a few different things. One, research the area. Is there water nearby? How about terrain? Have others camped there before? Two, don't camp in low areas. Water flows in areas with the least resistance. Also, cool air settles in low areas at night and can make your trip a lot colder than you thought. Three, look for dead trees and limbs and stay out of their way as they may fall on your head overnight. Number four, if you're tenting, soft and level ground can help with sleep and insulation. Just make sure you've double checked for like sticks, rocks, and anything else that can damage your tent. Five, having Water nearby is good, but it also brings mosquitoes. Camp at a reasonable distance if you can. And number six should be pretty obvious, don't be a dummy with fires. Food. Choosing high calorie, low weight food can make the difference. If you plan to cook, the lightest weight option is to find dry foods that are just add water options to cook. Most outdoor stores have freeze dried or like those dehydrated pre-made meals in the camping section. Those are awesome options for people that don't want to think about cooking and want to save additional weight by not having to bring extra cooking gear, but always bring an extra meal or two just in case. Snacking is important if long hikes are in the plans and drink plenty of water even when you don't feel thirsty. The backcountry is not a fun place to get dehydrated. Water treatment. Bring a good water filter or water treatment tablets. Don't ever trust the water in streams or lakes. It's also a good idea to have a backup water treatment in case your filter fails. If all else fails, you can boil water if you can get a fire going. How to poop. <laughs> Take 75 steps off trail and bring along something to Dig a small hole, then drop your pants. And one of the best tips I have is to take one leg out of your pants completely, as chances are you're not a good aimer yet. Squat, hold onto a tree, and uh, let her rip. Then when you're done, bury the teepee and mark the spot with a stick so others do not dig up your landmine. Hygiene. Bring a small roll of toilet paper, possibly some wet wipes and maybe some sanitizer. There's not enough deodorant in the world to manage the stink of the backcountry, so leave it home. <laughs> deodorant can actually attract bugs and animals anyway. Animals. Your biggest worry shouldn't be bears and large animals, but instead the smaller ones like rodents that can get into your food bag. However, if you're heading into bear territory, it's always a good idea to bring bear spray. All you gotta do is find out ahead of time what the bear situation is. Some areas actually require you to bring a bear canister in order to pack food and smelly like items in it. Other areas may not require anything at all, but it's always a good idea to at least hang your food high enough in a tree that it can't be reached. If you don't own a bear canister, you can usually rent them at an outdoor store near the location where you're hiking. First aid. This is something you always bring but hopefully will never need. The first aid that you'll use the most will be the insect repellent and the foot care. Bring a small bottle of repellent that is good for mosquitoes and ticks. Bring moleskin or leuco tape for treating blisters. If you feel at all like your feet are getting hot spots from hiking, stop hiking and treat it before it becomes blisters. You can bring other first aid stuff as you feel that you're gonna need it, but don't bring first aid you don't know how to use because it's just gonna be added weight. All right, now I've given you a 30,000 foot view of backpacking and you probably feel like you totally just drank out of a fire hose. <laughs> Check out some of my other videos where I can get a lot more detailed on some of this stuff. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, also subscribe subscribe for more, hit the bell notification so I can send you a video every time it's released and I will see you on the next one.